Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to explain why happiness cannot be forced, or in the specific context of politics, why the government cannot force you to do what's in your best interest. So let's begin with just the question of ethics. How does someone make a decision? How does a rational person decide what to do in a certain context? Well, a rational person will look at reality, look at all the circumstances, everything that would happen from each side of what his decision would be, and decide which one is in his best interest, which one, in which one to do the positives outweigh the negatives, and which one would make him the happiest. Now, when someone is forced to do something, it completely subverts this whole process, this whole process of rationality, of looking at reality and deciding which things are best for me, which things are going to be in my best interest. Force says, no, you have to do this decision regardless of what you think, regardless of what you want. And ultimately, in such a context, the person who is deciding or the person who is being forced to do this thing doesn't have the opportunity to decide to do this thing, to consciously consent to doing this thing. Um, and ultimately to consciously decide that the pros of doing this thing outweigh the cons of doing this thing. So they're just forced into this context where they have, where they're forced to do this decision, which has, comes with pros and cons that they've never consciously agreed to, never consciously decided upon. Um, so then in this context, when, they're, when they are forced to make this decision, there's going to be negative aspects of this, even if it's just the idea of, well, what if I could have done this other thing over here? What if I could have made this other decision? I, I might have liked that too. Just the idea of opportunity cost, the uh, negative, that's, that is in a sense a negative, the, the uh, taking away of your ability to do another thing. I mean, that alone is one negative thing, but there's usually other negative things depending on the context of your decision because most decisions are not entirely pleasurable, entirely positive. There's going to be little little things in context that'll make you feel a little bit of pain or a little bit of something wrong. That I mean, that's usually how most decisions work. Like if you're going to decide, oh, I want to go to college, um, that's irrational. There's a lot of good that comes from that, but there's a lot of like work that has to go into that too, which is not entirely negative. I mean, there's good things that come from that, but there also is the exhaustion that comes from work. So usually most decisions, there's some negative that comes from that. Now, when you consciously decide to do that thing, you say, no, this negative is absolutely meaningless in the context of the, great, the greater thing that I achieve here, the greater happiness that I will attain. Um, so they can pretty much ignore that or they can find pleasure in that knowing what it's ultimately leading to. But when you're forced to do that, you don't have the time. You don't have the conscious decision making. You don't have, yeah, you don't have the time to think about that. You don't have, or you didn't th think about that. And you didn't decide that this negative thing is minor in the greater context. So essentially, when you're forced to make that decision, you're forced to experience these negative consequences or these negative consequences of that decision completely against your will. You never decide. You never agreed to these negative consequences. Um, and even if the greater good is so much bigger, so much better than that, you're still being forced to um, forced to experience these negative things that you never consented to, that you never decided would ultimately were okay in the context of your happiness because you never consciously committed to that. You never weighed the options and said these negatives, uh, these negatives are meaningless in the context of the positive. <laughs> So essentially, these negatives are just forced upon you without your consent. Um, and that ultimately leads to resentment of that decision, even if it's the right decision. It leads to a resentment of the decision and of the person who forced you to do that, make that decision. And when you resent the decisions you have made in your life, and that you, I mean that you were forced to make in this context, but when you resent those decisions, you're not going to live a very happy life. You're always going to have that, you're always going to have that contradiction in your mind, essentially, of, um, well, I think that's the best wording I can do for that. Like that contradiction in your mind of you have this decision made in your life with all these negatives that come from that, that you never actually consented to, that you never actually decided would be in your best interest. Um, so when you're forced to do that thing, you're not going to be very happy. You're going to live a life of resentment and you're going to always focus on these negative things that were forced upon you. And like, and view them as in like inevitably negative because you never decided that in the context of the good that these are okay. They were just thrust upon you without your without your knowledge, without your consent, without your thought about it. Um, 
because I mean that's what happens when you are not consciously making a decision. Um, now for an example of this, um, in OPAR, Ayn Rand uses the idea of someone of you of you deciding your career. Let's say that somebody wants to be a or that someone's deciding if they want to be like a like an architect or an artist. I don't know, those are two examples. I forget the specifics that she used. I think an artist was one of them. Now, let's say an architect is objectively in his best interest. Um, oh, no, wait, Ayn Rand uses a doctor. That, one, that one's better. That one's actually a better example. Um, let's say someone wants to be a doctor or an artist. Now, let's say a doctor is in their best interest. They get all the positive things that come with that, the innovation, the treating people, the, all the like creative pro productivity that comes from being a doctor. Um, they get all of those positive things out of it, and that would ultimately, if they had time to be conscious about it and think about it, that would ultimately lead to them to being a doctor rather than an artist, and they would be okay with that. That would, that would be their best life possible. Now, let's say a government committee comes in before they make this decision on their, by their own free will. The government committee comes in and says, oh, I think based on your interests, you would, you would be best as a doctor. And forces them to be a doctor instead of an artist. Uh, well, in this context, being a doctor is what's best for the person. That would ultimately is what would make them happier if it was their conscious decision. However, now, now that the person didn't consciously think about it and consciously decide against it, they're going to experience all these negative things that come with being a doctor that they haven't actually decided are meaningless in the broader context of, what, of the greatness of what being a doctor would be for them. So they, they, there's all these negative things. Like, I mean, for one, you have the doubt that comes with, oh, but what if I, what if I would have been happier as an artist? Because they never actually decided that they would, they would be happier as a doctor than an artist. Um, so they always have that doubt in them. That's one cost. That's one negative that was forced upon them. And then you have all the other negatives that come with being a doctor, having to deal with like surgeries and deal with patients all the time that are like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know specifically what the negatives of being a doctor would be. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of an introverted person that doesn't like dealing with people in jobs, um, to an extent. Uh, like customer service, that's that sounds absolutely terrible for me. So I mean, for me, like having to deal with patients all the time would be a very negative thing. But having to deal with all the blood of a surgery or dealing with all these complaints from patients and things like that, all the, all those negative things would come about, and these would just be forced upon them without without the broader context of, of them knowing that, no, these are okay because of this, this greater good sort of, sort of idea or this broader context of it being better, um, of it being ultimately what's in his best interest. So you have all these negatives that are just forced upon you and it leads to resentment of your job um, and ultimately resentment of the government as well but for forcing you to do that. So yeah, I mean, you can't live that life of resentment. That's not how you live a happy life and with a happy job. You're just forced to live very unhappily if you live that sort of life. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say for today. Uh, the government sh cannot force happiness. The government cannot force you to do what's in your best interest. But yeah, thanks you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.